I'm Jim. And I'm Chris. Welcome to our home. This week we'll give you a tour of our 2007 Monaco Night. <music> When we first started looking at going full time, we had a Tiffin Allegro open road, 32 foot gas engine motorhome. It was great for weekend camping trips and even for a longer vacation trip, but we looked at it and said there's no way we can live in this full time. It wasn't big enough, didn't have enough storage space, and we just didn't feel that it would be adequate for what we wanted to do. So we started looking particularly at 40 foot uh, diesel pushers as they're called, rear engine diesel uh, motorhomes. 40 foot because we didn't want to go all the way up to the 45 which gets into a tag axle and all kinds of other things are more expensive. They have some additional carrying capacity and additional room but we didn't want to go that big. Uh, parking a 40 foot motorhome in some parks, particularly national parks, can be challenging enough and impossible in a lot of cases. So we sat down and put together a list of things that we felt were really high priorities, almost essentials, and then an another list of things we said these would be nice to have. So we really um, found that this home was uh, going to meet our needs and uh, we'll use every nook and cranny. It's, it has served as well for the last four years. That's right. We bought it in uh, four years ago. We went full time three years ago. So we had about a year of working with it and using it and, and actually living in it as we sold our house. Uh, we emptied everything out and had the house for sale for a while. And so this was home, even though we were still stationary and I was still working and we were parked on our own property, but we got to know the coach and got to learn a lot of things about it. And that was really good. As we were looking uh, for things that, that we could consider buying and we found a few, uh, we probably missed out on a few that were gone by the time we found them and at least one that was much higher price than I thought it was worth. But eventually we found an American Airlines pilot, a, a private seller, in the Dallas area and uh, he'd had this coach with his family and decided they couldn't use it anymore and wanted to uh, actually you know be rid of it so he was willing to sell and I was willing to buy. One of the things that I liked about that was as a pilot uh, he kept meticulous log records of what had been done to the coach, all the maintenance items, all the repair items so there was no doubt in my mind that the coach had been well taken care of and when you buy something used and you don't know what the background is that can be an important parameter if you're looking at buying a used coach, I would encourage you to also think about what maintenance records you can get from the seller or sellers, as the case may be, as part of your process. So I went to Dallas, looked at the coach. Uh, Chris was not able to go with me that particular day for whatever reason. So I texted her a bunch of pictures as I was looking at it. And we uh, did some talking uh, over the phone, of course, about the whole thing. And I made an offer and we came to the came to an agreed to price and so that's how we picked this particular uh, coach up. For those who are interested in, in technical details, this is a 2007 Monaco Knight 40 PDQ is the actual floor plan. It's 40 feet and 6 inches from bumper to bumper, so it's slightly over 40 feet long. It is built on a Roadmaster chassis. Uh, the Roadmaster chassis was originally designed by Chrysler Corporation and acquired by Monaco at some point, I'm not sure exactly when, but well before uh, this coach was made. And they were at the time fairly unique in that they were making their own chassis as well as everything else that went on at the body and the coach and all that kind of stuff. So it was a, a good deal uh, for them. Uh, they made a good chassis that has a good reputation in the industry and uh, it served us well. 
the engine is a Cummins ISC 330, 330 horsepower, 950 uh, pound-feet of torque, and so it moves down the road. It's not the fastest vehicle on the on the road going up a steep mountain, but uh, when we we climb mountains with this thing, I will pass uh, tractor trailers that are pulling heavy loads. Uh, I can get around them, and then if they're not so heavily loaded, most tractor trailers will pass me. So, not that that's worth a lot, but it kind of gives you a calibration point maybe for how fast and how well this coach uh, travels on the road. It has a very smooth ride. It's got eight airbags under it, and so it's a very smooth ride as long as the roads are reasonably smooth. Uh, these days, one of my big complaints uh, just traveling almost anywhere is the road conditions vary from great to abysmal. Uh, there are some roads that, uh, one interstate section in particular I know of, that I slow down to about 30 miles an hour because I feel anything faster than that is actually unsafe on the road. And uh, I just slow down and put my four-way flashers on, and if the cop wants to stop me, I'll fight it in court as being uh, the road isn't maintained well enough to go any faster in this vehicle. But anyway, uh, that's my personal opinion. But in the meantime, we want to take you on a tour through the device, show you what we like. Uh, maybe mention some of the things that were warts. We, we have done a lot of modifications to uh, this particular coach, and we'll, we'll kind of highlight those as we go. Uh, but other than what we point out, it's pretty much stock. Monaco built a good machine, and this is still a good machine. Well, this is the working part of the coach. It's the driver's cockpit. And uh, you can see it's pretty much like any other vehicle would be. There's a steering wheel. There are pedals on the floor. What's usually unique about uh, diesels and pushers like this is there are a number of, of switches and controls that are along the left-hand side of the panel. You can see this particular coach, they mounted them uh, right beside the driver's side. This coach has hydraulic leveling jacks, and they're actually capable of lifting the, the coach completely off the ground. They don't recommend you do that, but they have enough power to do that, and I've used it to raise tires uh, for service. You will see kind of up here, if I can point to it with my finger and see how well that works, but right down there, uh, is a shift panel for the Allison transmission. It's a six-speed uh, transmission, which is fairly standard in diesels. And used uh, that, that transmission is used in a lot of different vehicles besides just motorhomes. One of the fairly unique things about that transmission with a diesel is there is no park uh, in the transmission, so you have no choice on that. You, you must put on the emergency brake uh, in order to keep the coach from moving. The emergency brake only works on the rear wheels. It does not work on the front tires. So if you're leveling or in a situation where you actually lift the back tires off the ground, you have no brakes, uh, you need to chalk the front wheels. On the right, you'll see a display, which is a uh, display for engine information as you're driving down the road. It also has uh, cameras on the outside. One part of that display is a rear view camera. The other part is controlled by the turn signals for a left turn or right turn. It has side mounted cameras that will come on that display. You get a, a chance to see what's up in your hidden blind spot. Beyond that, uh, it's just a vehicle. It's long. You have to watch tail swing. You have to watch cutting corners too sharp because uh, the inside cuts sharp as well. And so once you get used to that, these things are actually fairly easy to drive. I'm going to turn it over to the boss lady here and let her conduct most of the tour inside. All right. Okay. So part of the upgrades that we did uh, to the mo to our home uh, was to replace the two sofas that were in here with furniture that we felt was more comfortable and suited our needs. So uh, here we have a sofa bed so that we're able to have guests. Go ahead. And we also have um, an arm rest that comes down with cup holders so that it, it's convenient to hold our beverages uh, when we have more people in the RV. Um, part of our thinking was we have two 12-year-old uh, grandchildren, and with that armrest in the middle, they'd have their own territory, and it would possibly give us some peace in the family. Here's both of our co-pilots enjoying their favorite places on the floor. Uh, the black one is Pepper, and the other one is Sasha. And they've, they've been with us since we started, so they've had four years or three years on the road as well as we have, and they have been in 49 of the 50 states in the last three years. All right. So another of our upgrades included these two um, rocker swivel chairs. Um, they do, uh, they are recliners, and uh, this is what we were used to in our home. So we wanted this in our mobile home as well. And um, so 
when we're tr actually traveling, these are up tied into the slide area. And when we're stationary, Jim can pull them out and support them in the front and they serve perfectly for our comfort. So as I said before, every nook and cranny is put to use. And whether it's uh, electronics or what's up in this cupboard and some of the things that we might need was, as we're going down the road, or on the other side, some crackers and some small appliances like our toaster, uh, the, each cupboard is full. All right, so uh, the, our dinette area would be just like uh, in, a, in a sticks and bricks home, but uh, has to be ready to be mobile as well. This extends so that you can add a couple more chairs, as Jim mentioned, that we have in the back under the bed. And um, these items that we use every day um, easily go up into a cupboard up above. And so the, the things that are loose are, have their little place to go. And um, the chairs, we just use a bungee cord just to secure them as we travel down the road. So another one of the upgrades that we did uh, was to replace the fabric um, uh, window covers. And we went to MCD and, re and got the screens that uh, help lessen the, the amount of light or bright sun during the day and gives you also a degree of privacy. And then your nightshades. And they are so nice and easy to use. MCD is in McKinney, Texas, if you're interested. All right. So one of the features of this particular kitchen is this uh, pullout that is very helpful for extra counter space. And it, when you're traveling down the road, you just slide it in and secure it. And when you're stationary, we pull it out and have that extra space. Some of the things that Jim has come up with to make a little extra storage is uh, our knife rack, which uh, is a magnet and uh, keeps all that out of the drawer. Um, the microwave uh, is also a convection oven and it took a little bit of time, but we did learn how to use it. And uh, so we're, we're in good shape with an oven and uh, our three burner gas stove. Um, and again, the cupboard space is all in use. We have a spice rack and just every nook and cranny used. And over here, we have some of our appliances that I use every day. Uh, the blender for my shake in the morning and the coffee pot, gotta have my coffee. And these I can secure going down the road and um, so they're, they're in different positions, but they, they will stay in, and uh, even our bumpiest roads, they stay per the secure. They're heavy enough to do that. And others like the toaster, we bring out when we're using it and it's in a cupboard. And for pantry, for uh, the smaller items that we have, uh, they do tip over occasionally. <laughs> But uh, you can see our peanut butter and syrup and all the kinds of little things that you uh, use uh, often are readily available in our kitchen. The other upgrade that we did was to add a uh, residential refrigerator. And it has been great for us. Um, we have the, um, something sticking. Oh, that's falling down. Sorry. So we have plenty of room. We have a large freezer. Um, we have an ice maker. Again, all the comforts. When we're traveling down the road, we have spring-loaded bars that fit across each of the shelves to keep everything secure. You can also see we use containers so that small bottles like pickles and different things don't get away. Okay, so we also have a king-size bed, which was important to us. And uh, the storage up above, some of it uh, 
uh, such as in the middle, we don't use that much. It's a little harder to get to, but what's on the sides we can use pretty readily. Uh, we've even got some uh, uh, little totes that fit uh, along the side of, at least my side of the bed, which helps uh, with extra storage. And uh, of course the windows give us a good cross breeze when it's a nice day. So for um, <clears throat> for us, this this is a pretty nice space for uh, clothes and uh, uh, different items that we maybe don't use as often as others on the bottom drawers. And uh, again, the cupboards up above, all things readily available that we we use often. The closets are again, you have to kind of choose what's important for you to have for clothes. I have a mix right now of, of warmer weather and, and uh, colder weather clothes because we've been traveling and have hit various temperatures. I have a shoe rack that helps me a lot. And um, Jim has hung a, a simple or a, a vacuum cleaner to the back so it stays charged. Uh, when we're stationary, it can be plugged in and we're and charged up. By the way, that's her side of the closet, <coughs> and you would think we would get equal billing, but no. No, certainly not. Jim has a suit and a robe, <laughs> and that's <laughs> it for this closet. Um, there are a couple more drawers here, and um, but otherwise you get into the electronics. Yeah, the electrical wiring, the fuse box, uh, fuse panel is up in the top, the distribution panel. There's a fuse box around the corner you probably can't see in the video with a bunch of 12 volt fuses so that corner top of it is pretty well used up from a standpoint of being able to hang anything they did compensate by putting three drawers down below so it's not totally lost space uh, i do have my own closet so it's always not lost uh, and this is just how we've chosen to partition it but for the most part uh, what you see up here and this is since my clothes are generally shorter uh, shirts and jackets and so forth so they're there and there's a, as you can see, there's a shoe place in there, and then if I pan on down, there's a drawer down below with my jeans and other pants like that get folded up and just put into the, into the drawer. One of the upgrades the previous owner had done was to replace the old CRT style television set that was in this cabinet with a flat screen TV. So that was already done when we got the coach, but he left the space behind that. Uh, it's pretty much unused. The, the, uh, the frame you see around the TV was actually bolted uh, to the wall so you couldn't even open it up so if you want to pull on that side and open that up i put it on a hinge and put a shelf in there and uh, this has become another electronics bay uh, what you see with the flashing green light up at the top is what's called a network attached storage uh, that is 13 terabytes of online storage that i have in the coach and then underneath that there there is uh, some other assorted paraphernalia related to the wireless system we have. Getting video of this bathroom is going to be a challenge uh, because I, there just isn't enough room to get the camera far enough back but you can see from this angle there is a shower to the left and then there is a, a sink on the right with a medicine cabinet behind the mirror above that. That tends to be my space. Again we have more places to put things. There are doors and cabinets down below that contain a miscellaneous kind of stuff. Uh, the bottom right door is mostly dog treats and things for the dog, so they get their own space as well. So another of the upgrades that we did was to add a washer and dryer. And um, it is a two-in-one model. And so it, it uh, I was so thankful to get it because the laundromat is not my thing. But it is, um, you, it is slower uh, to dry, so you can wash uh, more clothes than you can dry at one time unless you don't care how wrinkled they get such as towels and such and uh, but I love love having it. it really works well and up here again more storage um, a dog food <laughs> and various sundry uh, containers of things that we need one of the interesting things about a diesel steering column is that the steering wheel turns up almost flat. It's not quite flat. I'm not sure you can tell in the video. There's a very slight slope to the back, which could be compensated for in how the tabletop is mounted, but that's all that is. It's a
top with three clips on it. They go onto the steering wheel, hold it in place, and then I add a secondary monitor to my laptop, and it's a Dell convertible XPS portable, so the keyboard flips around underneath, and you can see it sitting in the chair. There's a keyboard on a lap pad, and it also has a place for the mouse. So uh, when we're not driving down the road with this rig, I can turn this into my home office, if you will. I have full access to my computers, both screens. And what is obvious here is there is an uh, Ethernet cable that has been run from the front of the RV all the way to the back where the, where the file server storage is located. And so I have high-speed access back there, and I have uh, essentially unlimited storage with 13 terabytes in there. I'm currently using about five of that uh, with taken up with mostly pictures and videos. Uh, the other thing which happens is I have a uh, cellular modem uh, which sits up and to the right of the TV in one of those cabinets. And that provides us with uh, high-speed data services from either AT&T or Verizon, not both, but I can select which one has the best service in any particular location. That's also tied into the network with an Ethernet cable. So all of my speeds are fundamentally limited by the outside data connection speed, and that will run anywhere from kind of almost unusable. At, uh, in fact, in some cases, no signal at all it is unusable. But fairly low speeds, I think the highest I have seen here recently, which was AT&T up in the Dallas area, and I was running 50 megabits per second down and, and uh, I don't know, 25 up or something like that. But a really, really good high-speed connection on, on, on cellular data for that. And it varies. If you're traveling in an RV, you know it varies all over the place, depending on where you are, how much loading is on the cell towers, and 100, and 100 other factors. I'm not sure I even understand all of them. The outside of the motorhome tends to be my domain. Chris takes care of largely the inside, and then I have all the stuff stored outside that I use to work on the motorhome and a lot of other things to support the motorhome. And that is one of the key features of a diesel pusher, one of the reasons we like this versus some other options that we had. It's the amount of storage space you have underneath. And since it's full time, this is our home, and so pretty much anything we want to have with us is going to be stored somewhere uh, in the coach. So. It's very important to think about that. We've adopted some strategies, I think, that give us maximum use of the space. Uh, weight is always going to be a problem when you're doing this kind of thing. So this coach has a uh, maximum capacity of about 13,000 pounds on the front axle and 20,000 pounds on the rear axle. The rear axle is pretty much maxed out with a full fuel load, and the front axle probably has about 1,000 pounds to spare. But one of the issues with any of these devices is weight balance between the front and the back. And so it's almost impossible to add weight only on the front end. Whatever you do is going to have some impact on the back end as well. So we've done some work to balance things where it's stored underneath the heavier items towards the front, the lighter items towards the back. But uh, it's, it's really still a work in progress because every time I want to add something into it, at this point, we pretty much uh, have to take something out if we're going to add something more in. So it becomes a balancing act, but let me show you some of the storage options we have underneath of this beast. We've got two doors down here, pretty much the same size on either side. And one of the things I like about this coach versus some other ones uh, is on this one, the doors swing out and sideways. You can find them where they swing up, and that becomes a real problem. No matter what you do, when the slide is out, it's more difficult to reach these things underneath. And so that's one of the reasons I really like the, uh, the trays that are under here that slide out. You, know, you do have to deal with this. But there's, there's two places under here. This is the first one. It's obviously towards the front. And we're, we'll pull that tray out so you can kind of see what's going on. With the tray out, you can see how it's organized. The bins are made by Sterilite, and I've actually got a couple of different series, but the series are important because they stack together. Uh, this this kind of handle is one series, this is a different, but they all have a groove on the, the top that aligns with a protrusion or the base, uh, depending just which series you have. And so when they're locked in place like that, they don't slide. Of course, the bottom ones don't slide very well either. Anyway, they can't come out because of the lip. There's also a uh, fabric on the bottom of this to help keep them from moving around. And I try to organize everything as best I can into, into bins. They're labeled, for example, that's a bin of extension cords. Uh, this is crimp tools and files, so I can look at the top and see what's in there. 
try and keep stuff organized that way. It doesn't always work out. I'm sometimes not real good about getting stuff back where it belongs. In the middle, there's always some uh, loose items that uh, fit that maybe could go somewhere else, but there are also things I tend to get out fairly often, so they're around someplace. And uh, I try to keep this dejunct as best I can, but still things have a habit of getting out of kilter, if not necessarily where I want them. And so I can usually find things pretty easily uh, because of where they are, they're in bins. I don't have to sort through a whole stack of stuff. The other thing which happens because of the trays, and the trays can be accessed from either side. It slides out this way. There's a door on the other side, and it slides out on the other side, going the other direction. But you'll notice the bins stop about here. There's actually a lot of room. The opening goes all the way almost up to this uh, edge of the, of the slide. But there is a rail section in the middle. It's part of the structure of the coach. It's also where a lot of the wiring and uh, electrical stuff is run. So if you want to run it all the way through, then you really have a, a stop that would knock things off and you tried to pull it out of the opposite side. So you are limited in the height uh, to some extent, but we have plenty of these bins in there and room for a few more as we add other things, which we, we try to not do. If we add something, we try to give it to something else to make room for it as opposed to trying to cram more things into a small space. As I mentioned earlier, this coach has a center section that runs down completely through the middle. You can see it in the background up there. If you have things stacked on the tray that are higher than where that drops down, then you clearly can't pull the tray out from both sides. So that limits how high I can stack the boxes. It also means there's a fair amount of volume underneath here, which is essentially unusable with using the two trays. And so we kept running into things where we'd like to have some places to store other things. And I came up with the idea of adding these shelves, and they're on either side. And they're just wire shelves uh, picked up at Home Depot and then cut to the length that they just fit uh, in this part of the coach. And they're suspended uh, from some brackets as well as from the ceiling a little bit where I can get to something solid. But if I can point to it in here, basically that rod runs down, holds the weight of the shelf there. They're attached in the back side uh, to the wall that's down there. So there's some support on the front so they don't tip down too much. And given the way the shelf is designed, they're, they're pretty secure. So small things, in particular small long things that might not even fit across the coach can go in up there. Here's another example of using space that might otherwise be uh, unusable. Uh, we have a couple of folding chairs that are one of which you can see in that case. And so there is space between the two trays. And so the folding chairs uh, on this side and there's a mat on the other side, they get dropped into those spaces. They're uh, space that would not otherwise be used for anything. This is the rearmost compartment on the passenger side. And the primary uh, item which is in here is the inverter. That's really what it's for. And if I can point to it effectively, it's the gray box over here. In our case, that is a uh, 3000 watt inverter. It's a Magnum uh, modified sine wave, which works quite well for everything that we do. We run the refrigerator off out of it and have not had any problems with our coach running it with the, with the uh, modified sine wave. That's a, an okay thing. Another thing up here in the front, which if I can point to it, is right in there. That's the solar charge controller. So there's a, a thousand watts of solar panel on the roof, uh, heavy gauge wire that comes down from the roof to uh, provide the, the current down to that device and then it's down here and the batteries of course are right on the other side of the wall it's mounted on so there's some fairly short heavy duty wiring that goes through the wall to allow me to charge the batteries with solar and so uh, given a reasonable amount of sunlight we can be off grid and if we don't have to run the air conditioners we can stay off grid for an extended period of time uh, without running the generator or needing a shore power. The rest of that compartment uh, was pretty much empty and so it gets used to store a lot of the uh, fluids and chemicals that I need uh, or potentially might need on the road, uh, oil and antifreeze and uh, uh, additive for the fuel, some things like that. The yellow box you see is actually a small electric pressure washer. Given that I have some place that I have water and I've done this, it takes about 50 gallons of water from my freshwater tank. So, uh, and if you're familiar with RV travel, most RV parks will not allow you to uh, wash the RV there and it gets into local pollution regulations as well as water consumption and a lot of different reasons for it. Some parks uh, are starting to allow you to do it now. You pay a somewhat nominal fee, maybe five bucks, which considering the amount of water you use, that's an expensive way to buy 50 gallons of water or so. But you can do it there instead of having to go find a, a car wash that's big enough to put something like this in or go pay 60, 70, 80 bucks at a Blue Beacon to have it washed.
This is the fuel fill door. It's one of two. There's one on each side. Uh, you can fill diesel into it from either side. Again, this is a 100 gallon tank, so it, it takes a fair about to fill it up if you've run it down very far. And you can run it from both sides. One word of caution if you ever try and do this uh, is while a lot of truck uh, stops have pumps on both sides of the vehicle and uh, a lot of trucks have tanks on both sides and they can actually fill both tanks at the same time. Do not do that with one of these because it's one tank with two openings. And so if you tried to do that, you would be putting fuel in one side and most likely at some point starting to pump it out the other side. So uh, it's not usable for to fill from both sides, but you can, uh, if you're in a restricted area, have trouble getting into a pump, you can put it in from either side. One of the features of most motor homes, a lot of them anyway, uh, certainly the larger class of motor homes, and also found on fifth wheels and some travel trailers, that's an onboard generator. It's nice if you're in a campground and you have plug-in power, but you don't always do that. In our case with the solar and the inverter, without the air conditioners running, we can run pretty much everything in the coach uh, that we're going to run without any additional power. Uh, the one limitation to that would be the uh, convection oven in the convection mode. You run it as a microwave, that's a fairly short time, but if you're going to bake a cake for an hour or something like that, then it would probably be uh, a significant drain on the batteries. You could probably do it and get away with it, but something we would usually avoid. However, in our case, we have a generator which is on the front of the coach, and ours is not in a slide, which I wish it were. That's one of the one of the things I would change about this would be to put that generator in a slide. This is the generator as it sits in the coach. It's between the rails, as they call them, of the chassis itself and sits underneath the cockpit. So it's very nicely tucked in there, very, very tight. Uh, you cannot take the cover off of this generator even with it in there because you have to get access to the top uh, to remove the cover. So we have had it removed once and they basically took that front door off that I opened up and I think it's four bolts is all that holds it in place. Disconnect the wires, disconnect the exhaust pipe, and then use a forklift and they can pull it out. It probably took them about 45 minutes to pull the generator. So when you need to pull it, there's an extra expense on that versus having one in a slide, but it is, it is doable and you don't pull them very often. This has been a, a very reliable device. Uh, we had it pulled at about 1200 hours. Uh, I suppose they have a thousand hour service, which we didn't get to, but we had it pulled at 1200 hours and did the service on it. And uh, the coolant tank had started, had leaked for a long time, which wasn't a big, huge issue, but uh, we did have that replaced. And so that was just recently done. With an eight kilowatt rating, it can run both air conditioners at full blast, as well as the uh, convection oven and anything else you can think of, including the uh, hot water heater off of electric. So it's a very powerful device and uh, not a problem at all as far as being able to use it. It makes using the RV a lot more flexible when you're out places where you haven't got power or if you're in a campground and the power goes out or if you're in a campground with 30 amp service that's kind of weak and marginal and you need to run both air conditioners, you can always power the generator up. We are here for an official part of our travel plans. We didn't necessarily set out three years ago to cover all 49 states that you can drive to, but we did put the map up and we did start filling in as we got into the parts of Texas and near Texas and kept adding to the map. Uh, we got to Alaska a couple years ago and we kept getting to more and more states and uh, we filmed a little bit earlier. We did loop uh, Idaho out here and had to go back and get it earlier this year. But that left us with the Northeast segment and we've filled in already on the map a couple of things. And so since then, uh, we took a tour up uh, to Maine, a, a commercial tour we participated in. And so that was able to get us into some more of the states in New England and specifically uh, New Hampshire. You wanna hold, hold that for me? Yeah. So we've got New Hampshire covered. I'll put that one almost in there, right? I missed. She wanted me to do this because she was afraid she would miss, so I missed, of course. But we'll see if we can get, ah, New Hampshire is now covered. And so the next little state that's up there, and you go from one to the other, and I about tried to put it in upside down, uh, but now we get Vermont. So now we have really covered pretty much all of the northern part of New England. And that leaves us Rhode Island, Delaware, no, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Delaware for states that we need to cover. So. We have successfully done that. If I can hold something this small and put it in there. So we spent time in Rhode Island 
and then from Rhode Island it was an easy jump over to my father's home state of Connecticut and so we got Connecticut and we spent a night there this is a, at least one night in all these states sometimes a lot longer than that yes and so now this took us back down we went into uh, back into Pennsylvania to see some trees and stuff and then we stayed in New Jersey okay. and so we are down to the last of the 49 states that one can drive to and that is the glorious state of Delaware on the Delmarva Peninsula and so we have now filled in 49 states that we have been to in the last three years and spent at least one night in all 49 states. Mwah! <laughs> so that's our home. Thank you for sharing some time with us today. Yes, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate uh, having a chance to show off our home to you. And uh, as we said, this has served us well for the last four years. One never knows exactly what might happen in the future, so you might hang around for a while and see if something else develops. But for now, we want to thank everyone who's joined uh, us for the video this week. We want to thank all of our subscribers. We appreciate every single one of you that does help the channel out uh, when, we're, when we're looking at stuff. And so if you haven't subscribed already and would like to, please click on the subscribe button down below. And there's a bell icon. If you click on that, you'll be notified when we post a new video. We try and get these out every Thursday evening if we can, given travel schedules and other commitments. So in the meantime, thanks for joining us. We hope you're having a great day. And we hope you'll join us on the highways and byways of America as we travel around. Remember, as you drive, keep her between the ditches.